Now this is literally the best chocolate tart that you will ever eat, cook or experience because I worked on that chocolate tart recipe a lot. And I think it's the perfect chocolate tart in terms of not being too rich, not being too sweet, not being overly dense or too heavy. And when I was a young chef, sort of five or six years ago, I think, you know, you could literally go into each two or three Michelin star restaurant in France or in England and you would find one dessert on each restaurant menu, which was chocolate tart. Um, Robuchon had one, Marco Pierre White had one, Gordon Ramsay had one, the Rue brothers, Georges Blanc, Raymond Blanc, who else, Pierre Kaufman, Bernard Lasso, and of course, Bocuse. And all those chefs seem to use more or less the same recipe and method. And I tried all the recipes. And yes, those chocolate tarts are all really, really chocolate intense, but I find them a bit too heavy, just not light enough, you know, to serve them at the end of a meal. I mean, chocolate as a dessert is a challenge anyway, unless it's chocolate mousse or a chocolate souffle, so check out my videos on that too. Chocolate is simply a bit full on in terms of being filling at the end of a meal. Plus, and you put those chocolate tarts of the chefs into the fridge and they become hard and really literally impossible to eat unless you bring them back to a warmish room temperature which literally can take hours but none none of that will ever be your concern because the chocolate tart you and I cook today is very much based on those chef's methods or techniques but with a much more lightened up recipe by the end of this video I'll tell you a little story of a friend of mine who has a lot to say about tarts too. First let's bake the shell, the tart shell, which we're gonna make a short crust pastry, so have some flour, some almond meal, that makes it a bit crunchier, makes it a bit nicer, lighter sugar, salt to balance out the flavors, so check out my video on seasoning where you learn about that too and then you just make it well into it, you add some egg yolks, you add some whole eggs and then I will just sort of knead and push it together. I don't want to develop the gluten in that dough too much so just start breaking the eggs, mixing them with the flour and then you add the butter. So I work with my hands because in case my butter is too cold my fingers or my hands will warm the butter and the dough will come together much easier. If the dough gets too wet, that basically means your butter is too soft. You can always fix that by just putting it in the fridge where the butter gets cold again and then the dough basically hardens up again too. So just push it together. It needs to be a smooth dough, okay? So I'm gonna check it by cutting it in half to see if it looks on the inside exactly like on the outside and it does. So that means I mixed it well enough and then I just put that in the fridge. You can leave it there for a week, you can freeze it down. It works really well too. And that's your dough. So now I'm gonna show you how to blind bake so that you then can fill in your chocolate mixture into your tart. And for that, first I get my cake ring. So I'm using a bit of sort of a chefy cake ring. I love them because you only buy them once in your lifetime. They last you forever and it's easy to get the paper out underneath. But of course you can use a spring mold or anything. But if you ever wondered why those tarts in restaurants look so much better, it's because chefs use those type of rings. So I just wrap some paper around like his home we're doing here, put a, something solid underneath like a tray and now I'm going to show you how to roll the pastry. So I take it out of the fridge, never ever roll your short crust pastry with flour because you haven't developed the gluten. And to roll out a lump like that really evenly is another story. So I'll show you a little trick here. So I'm going to cut slices of that dough and I cut them as thick as I want them or as thick as I need them for my crust later on. So I place them next to each other. So just make sure you cut them super thin, put another piece of paper on the top. I mean, because I haven't developed the gluten, if I'm going to lift that dough up, it's going to break into 100 pieces. So I need to lift it with the help of the paper. Plus, if the dough gets too wet, I just can transfer the whole thing into the fridge where the butter gets harder. So mine is pretty soft and now it's just going to go in. And I joined up all the ends. And if I have some holes somewhere, I fill them up now. And then the paper back on. Keep rolling that again. As I said, if it's too wet, put it in the fridge or freezer for five minutes. 
and now the most important thing is that you need to remove the paper, okay? And then you stick it gently back on, because I don't want to do that pulling motion when the pastry is in a mold. So basically turn it over, remove the paper on the second side too. Can you see how much that sticks? That in a mold will be disaster. So it slightly sticks onto the paper, and then I lift it with the paper, and I lift it into the mold and then the paper comes off much easier. So I have, my dough is pretty wet. So I wanted to do that because I want to show you the worst case scenario. In case you tear the dough a little bit, it's not a problem, just stick it back together. Here we go. I should actually put that in the fridge for 10 or 15 minutes, it would go much easier. And then you just fold the dough into the corners. You actually lift it into the corners and then you gently press it in there and you need to let it hang over on the top can you see that if I don't let that hang over on the top you know when I put it in the oven the heat hits the dough at first right on the edges and if that's not hanging over like some people cut it off you see I cut it off over the edge so the dough actually can hold itself onto the ring and I build it up a bit higher so because I want to get my tart filled right to the top so now the most important thing, paper back in. Go to the center, move the paper gently outwards, and then you work from the center with your finger by sort of pushing the paper down so that you don't have any air pockets. Do you get that? If you have too many air pockets there, it's not great. You're gonna steam, gonna interrupt there, and then the pastry doesn't get crispy. Plus, it can cook uneven, and then you really push it into the edges. Fold over the sides, that's really important too, so that the paper holds the sides up really well too. Put in some baking beets, could be rice, could be beans, you can use them again and again. Push them outwards towards the sides, and then it goes into the oven at 180 degrees or 360 degrees Fahrenheit for around 25 minutes. Then you take it out, okay? And then we remove the baking beets. So the dough underneath will still be a little bit wet on some batches might not have completely cooked through, but it should be cooked, but it should be a bit wet. So for that, it's just then remove all those baking bits. First use a cup, then lift the whole paper out, and then you put that pastry shell back into the oven. But before you do that, you fix up any holes, any gaps, because we're gonna fill in a fairly liquid filling, and that's it. So seal it all up. So while that's cooking in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes, I bring some single cream, so it's extremely important. A single cream or pouring cream. No thickened cream, no double cream. That's gonna be too dense. I bring that to the boil. I turn off the heat, okay? And then I feed in the chocolate. The chocolate should have no more. It should be somewhere between 55 and 60% in cacao. If it's dark chocolate, you have stretch it with some milk chocolate. And no more heat, no more cooking. You just whisk that in until it becomes really nice and thick. You add some flavorings. You have the recipe in the link below and also check out my online courses. I added some hazelnuts, essence, could be gourmet, and then added the egg yolks. Keep stirring that together until it's a really nice and smooth ganache, you call that. And then take the mold out of the oven, fill the ganache in, turn the heat off in the oven and put it in the oven in the chilling oven for around 30 minutes. After that, you take it out, you then chill the tart down. So you either leave it at room temperature for three or four hours, or you put it in the fridge. So you can see it's all wobbly. You do not want to cut anything yet. I had mine in the fridge now for two hours, and now I take the paper off. You can see the chocolate is nicely set. And now it just go right on the top and cut off the edges and that's why it's so important to fill it right to the top so it's going to look much prettier. Get a knife, put it between the ring and the cake and then just cut all the way around and then lift the ring off. But what I'm going to do today, I'm going to put lots and lots of chocolate shavings on it. So those chocolate shavings are just basically grated some chocolate or cut it on a mandolin knife put some milk chocolate dark chocolate lift off the ring and when you cut that cake you need to cut it with a blade that you made hot so like really hot water because it needs to melt itself so the chocolate otherwise it's not going to look pretty and here we go look at that there is our chocolate tart and it's not too rich not too heavy you have the recipe in the link below
Great. Try it. Tell me in the comments below what you think. Now, my friend Brad is a friend of mine. He's also a chef and he literally has the most amazing resume or CV that you could ever see. I mean, it is literally as thick as a book. And in the inner circle, chef industry, it's also known as the book of lies. Anyway, Brad, he lives back in England and he literally lives a very, very colorful life. I mean, lots of social activity, lots of ins and outs and all sorts of levels if you know what I mean. I mean, literally a party every week. So Brad has this saying that you should never, ever host a party without some French tarts. So here we go. In case you want to host a party soon, now you have a nice French chocolate tart recipe too. So I got you covered there and check out my videos on chocolate mousse. Check out my online courses to learn much, much more about cooking. And yeah, there's a recipe of course in the link below and otherwise you have a great day and thank you so much for watching.